The year is 2007. I'm maybe this tall. My dad and I sit in front of our kitchen counter, eyes glued to the crummy laptop sat in front of us, completely enthralled by the game that was gracing our screen. The logo that greets us upon booting the game up may seem ancient and past its heyday now, but to some its name may ring with nostalgia. Wild Tangent Games. The game it presents, Fate. A game that very well could be responsible for my foray into PC gaming and me and my dad's shared love of video games as a whole. The game was released in 2005, and I thought it was lost to time. So imagine my surprise when, while looking for the game today, I found out it was ported to Steam in 2013 for a measly 5 bucks, and I caught it on sale for 80 cents. I was excited to sit down and give this forgotten gem of a game from my childhood a shot once more to discover if it held up to 7-year-old me's memories. It did not hold up. Nostalgia permeates the gaming space nowadays. People yearn to feel the way they did playing games as a child, and through rose-tinted glasses remember games as being far better than they actually were. Some games, Mario 64, Ocarina of Time, Metal Gear, they hold up to our childhood memories because those games are timeless. Other games, like Rugrats Royal Ransom, which was the most fun shit I'd ever played when I was a kid, it feels like being slowly dragged through nails when I play it today. Fate doesn't really land in either of those extremes. It aged well enough, and the $5 price point is about perfect for what you're going to get out of the experience. A procedurally generated dungeon crawler with clear inspiration from the greats that came behind it, such as the original Diablo or Baldur's Gate, developed to give Wild Tangent its own hat to throw in the ring. So after booting the game up, you make your character, choose between your choice of cat or dog friend, and get started on your adventure. The plot is very simple. The town of Grove has had a dungeon resting in its center for as long as anyone can remember, and your character and homie of choice roll up with the hope of making a name for yourselves. This old fuck in front of the gate gives you a monster around floor 40 or 50 to go kill to raise your renown, and you're off. Start on a blank slate, build your character as you please, and go talk to some of the townsfolk to get better acquainted- well, Let me show you what I have to sell, huh? Jesus Christ. Okay, so this being a game from 2005, it doesn't take very long to start seeing the jank almost immediately. The voice acting quality varies from surprisingly good The dungeon gate has stood in the heart of the old wood. All the way down to <laughs> Nah. Voice clips play over everything, regardless of what's occurring on screen. You could be fighting multiple mobs, getting your ears assaulted by 20 different things, and literally every sound of the game would stop to make way for Your pet has grown more skilled. You move around, not with WASD, but by clicking the mouse and holding a direction. WASD controls the camera. There is no option to change this. In fact, there are no options to change any hotkeys, so I hope you like using I to open your inventory, you filthy animal. It's what you deserve. Interact with NPCs and pick items up by, you guessed it, clicking them. The mouse pulls a surprising amount of weight in this game, when it really doesn't have to. Combat is left click if you're using melee, and right click if you're using magic. It's riveting. There's no auto attack I can find either, so enjoy spamming left click if you're a melee oriented build, and some slightly more involved gameplay if you run a magic build. The main dungeon of the game is procedurally generated with a bunch of different themes for each floor. You've got your typical dungeon style, regal mansion design, hell. Hotkeys 1 through 6 can be set for various potions in the game, healing, magic, and stamina respectively. These also cannot be changed. Look, I understand, it's 2005. Accessibility was not the first thing on their minds. It just... it sucks today, that's all. The inventory system is a grid-based interface, meaning that dreaded inventory, inventory management, management is a necessary skill to be learned if you're going to have any hope of beating this game. It's essential to the dungeon crawler style. If you could loot everything, that wouldn't be any fun, would it? You better invest in these neat little books that open a portal back to town from any floor of the dungeon. Alternatively, there is a neat little mechanic with your home dog, or cat, where you load their inventory up with stuff that you want to sell and send them back into town to the merchants who are totally gonna fairly pay a fucking cat with rare jewels falling out of its fur. It's a neat little risk versus reward gamble because the further you are in the dungeon, the longer it takes your pack mule to return, 
and that's time where they won't be fighting alongside you, and they can pack quite a punch. Especially when you feed them fish. Mr. Whiskers? Fate actually has a few of these risk versus reward mechanics, such as the Fate statue from the game's art appearing at random in the floors of the dungeon, rewarding you either with shiny jewels to augment your gear with, or a boss monster that will tear your skin off. I actually got very lucky and received two jewels from one of these Fate statues, so I sold the extra one by sending it with my cat back into town. Your pet has returned. Jesus. I like to imagine that my cat is just a master at bartering or something and got a really good deal on the jewel by overhyping it. Yeah, Tony, I swear, this jewel right here is full of the magic juice. Why, I'd be stupid to part with it for less than a hundred thousand gold. She makes a good point. Now, there's a reason me and my dad played the shit out of this game, and call me crazy, but I swear I can remember this game having a free trial, where literally the entire game was available to you, and the only caveat was that you couldn't save. If anyone else with a better memory can confirm that for me, that would be cool. For a dungeon crawler though, that's like the coolest free trial ever. Literal 8-9 to nine hour sessions spent huddled around a laptop prestiging our character for the next dungeon run, knowing that we'd have to start fresh if the laptop battery died so we'd leave it plugged in and leave the game running overnight. Good times, good times. Wait, they released two sequels?